Matthew chapter number 23. We'll begin reading verse number 1. Got a little different thought tonight, but this is what God gave me. Verse number 1 said, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad the, their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feast and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. I guess that verse isn't in the Catholic Bible. Or if it is, they don't read it. That's pretty plain right there. Uh, that's not the message. Verse number 10. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we do thank you for Brother Humberto. We pray for him. We pray for his family. Lord, we pray you'd continue to open doors, meet the needs, and use them to win souls in these days. Now, Father, we thank you for the good singing. We thank you for being in the house of God. Thank you for the word of God. I'm glad we don't have to look for another. We've got the right one. God, we bless you for that. Lord, it's by the providence and by the hand of God we have it. We're thankful for it. Now, Father, help us tonight. And Lord, speak to our hearts, get glory to your name, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen, and amen. Here Jesus is speaking to the multitude, but also to his disciples, and he's given his disciples a teachable moment, if you will. Notice what he instructs on. First of all, he instructs on honoring some things. Look again in verse number 3. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. Can I say that when the word of God is taught and when it's preached and you are exhorted to obey it, you better obey it. Amen. What the word of God says, that settles it. It doesn't matter what anybody's opinion is. Uh, doesn't matter how uh, uh, somebody feels about it. Doesn't even matter how you feel about it. If God said thou shalt, you better. If God said thou shalt not, you better not. What the Word of God instructs us to do, we better do. Uh, we better honor what thus saith the Lord. Uh, but he also instructs not only on honoring, but he instructs on hypocrites. Look at verse number 3. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. That is the biblical and real definition of a hypocrite. You say one thing and do the other. And that's exactly what the scribes and the Pharisees did. Uh, uh, they were to be, uh, they were so-called masters of the law, but they began to teach their own laws and began to teach their own ways and their own ideologies. Uh, and they began to lay heavy burdens on men and expected men to carry out uh, their teachings, but they themselves didn't do it. And can I say, there's a lot of Baptist preachers that get up and preach that uh, a congregation ought to do this and do this, and the preacher can't even live up to it. Mm, you're welcome. That didn't cost anything. He deals with hypocrites. He also deals with haughtiness. Look in verse number 4. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and they lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves uh, will not move them with one of their fingers. Uh, uh, they thought they were better than those that uh, they were teaching and preaching to, uh, and they expected more out of them, uh, and they were haughty. They looked down their nose uh, at folks, uh, and they judged folks, uh, and they laid out certain criteria that if you didn't meet it, you didn't meet their standards. Uh, 
they were haughty. And he also deals with being a hireling. Mm, look in verse number 5. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries, that is their, their teaching, their schools of learning, and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the marketplace to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi, rabbi. They wanted to be seen. They were hirelings. They weren't men of God. Man of God doesn't want to be seen. He wants folks to see Christ. A hireling wants to be seen. A hireling wants all the attention. A, a hireling wants all the emphasis on them. Uh, uh, but mark her down. Uh, 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 if it's all about them, then Christ isn't getting the glory for it. The man of God always says, Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And then he deals with humility. Look in verse number 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. The way in God's economy, the way to climb the successful ladder, the way up is down. The lower you make yourself, the bigger Christ becomes in your life, and friend, then he'll exalt you. Even John said, uh, I must decrease and he must increase. And Jesus deals with humility. Well, I, I, I got this thought. This is why I'm going to just, I'm just going to throw it out there. I mean, it's hot and y'all mad anyway, so I'm just going to throw this out there, all right? I ought to preach on this thought tonight. I want to preach on legal, liberal, and legitimate Christians. Legal Christians, liberal Christians, and legitimate Christians. Because in this day and age, I'm seeing all of it. Unfortunately, I'm seeing far too many legal or pharisaical Christians and too many liberal Christians Amen. and not enough legitimate Christians. I was speaking with Brother Josh and Miss Brittany for service. And it's amazing. Churches drive two and a half hours to go here preaching because we don't have preaching all around here. Hmm? People constantly wanting to know where meetings are that they can go hear something. I, when Miss Annette and I was dating uh, 30 or something years ago, um, most of, of our dates we went to hear preaching. And you can just about find a revival back then somewhere going on around here. Uh, there was always churches having meetings, having revivals. Uh, 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 but I'm hard-pressed to recommend hardly any churches in our area doing anything for God. It's sad. So let me give you this little thought on legal, liberal, and legitimate Christians. And by the way, sometimes they cross the lines. Sometimes they straddle the fence. They, they may have some legitimacy in one area, but they're liberal or legal in another area. There's always some that kind of blend. But let me give you the... The little thought God gave me. Let, me. let me deal with legal Christian first. Pharisees. Uh, the crowd that looks down their nose at other folks. Mm, there's all, all kinds of them running around. If you didn't go to their college, if you didn't have some famous preacher lay hands on you, if uh, you don't uh, uh, dress like they dress and walk like they walk and do what they do and, you know, say the way they say it, uh, then you're illegitimate in their eyes. They're legal. Uh, let me tell you something about legal Christians. Legal Christ Christians seek to impress you. They'll seek to impress you by uh, the shingle they have on the wall that, where they graduated from or with their intellect and uh, uh, it amazes me a lot of these fellas they go away to college to learn to preach I learned a long time ago if God didn't put preach in you you don't have any preach are, are you listening uh, 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 it, it's kind of like you could give me a, a manual on how to uh, become a mechanic but uh, I'll never be able to fix anything it's just not going to happen because that's not in me uh, 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 but friend uh, uh, listen uh, they want to impress you uh, they want to impress you with their ministries and with their buildings uh, and with everything they've got going on uh, 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 what they're really trying to do is intimidate you. Because if you don't do it like they do it, oh, you're, you, you don't have the right stuff. Uh, they want to impress you, and then they seek to oppress you. They want to 
weigh you down or load you. Is not not what the Bible says? Did not Jesus say in verse 4, they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne? They give you so many uh, rules and regulations to keep uh, that you can't possibly keep them. Hmm? Let me give you an example. Y'all with me tonight? I mean, I am. I'm trying to help you. You know, is anybody here? Huh? You write this down, Colt. You write a love letter to your girlfriend. What's going on there? Huh? Huh? Listen. There was a time that there was a a church in our area that had a Christian school, and this Christian school uh, had all kinds of rules. And uh, if you didn't follow the rules, even outside of school, you got detention in school. Matter of fact, uh, one of the rules was if you went to a movie house, watched a movie, then you got detention at school. Now, who was, who was the one standing at the movie house seeing if any of the kids went to the movie? Kind of reminds me of uh, 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 them fellas that caught that woman in very act of adultery that Brother Phil preached on the other night. Where were those guys that they caught her in the very act, huh? Mm. but here's what I want to tell you they put all them rules on those kids my wife had many family members went to that school to my knowledge none of her family members are in church today they put so much weight and pressure on them they made the standard so heavy that nobody could live it and by the way that church today is as liberal as the vineyard up the street. Hmm? Uh, see, you can build a church on a list of rules. I could set out a list of rules this week. Everybody's got to follow these rules to be a member here. The only problem is, is you can't sustain a church on rules. Give you a list of rules. What happens is everybody starts trying to keep them. Then they start looking around and see who's not keeping them. And there's a feeding frenzy. You can't sustain it, friend. Can I say? And they want to oppress you into following all their little rules. There are still preachers who believe you can't preach if, you get, if you're not wearing a white shirt. Hmm? They preach if you got wire rim glasses, you're out of the will of God because... Uh, 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 John Lennon of the Beatles wore wire rim glasses. They have lost their mind over rules. And all the while, people are tripping over them and dying and going to hell. Legal preachers try to impress you, and legal Christians try to impress you, then they oppress you, and then they press you. After they weigh you down, they want to keep you down. And can I say after they press you, then they depress you. They dishearten you. They break you. That's why there are so many people that grew up in that environment that are out of church. They got broken. And they don't want to have anything to do with that anymore. And can I say after they depress you, they want to suppress you. They want to silence you. They don't want you telling anybody else how they abused you. Hmm? I know in legal churches where literal abuse, where child abuse, where all kinds of other abuses went on, and they have so threatened the people involved uh, uh, that people are afraid to speak out against it. Can I say it's wicked? And God doesn't honor when you uh, sweep wickedness under the carpet. It ought to be exposed. But they don't want their reputations tainted. Well, you want to keep your reputa reputation straight? Live by the Bible. Hmm? You want to keep your reputation straight? When there's sin in the camp, deal with it and get rid of it. Hmm? Uh, so that's legal Christians. Then there's liberal Christians. Hmm? Can I say something about liberal Christians? They tend to be very shallow. They know just enough about the scriptures to make them dangerous. They're very shallow. Matter of fact, if you start talking anything in depth in the scriptures, I mean, it just blows their mind. They've never heard anything like that. Uh, they never, ever get off the milk, if they even got to the milk. Hmm? 
They're very shallow, liberal Christians are. Liberal Christians have a real problem in that they think that they are the authority. Can I say the church is the authority? Right. Amen. We're just members uh, of the local assembly, but the church has the authority, not me. Hmm? Can I say all I am is I've been bought by price and the Lord Jesus is the authority in my life. The Word of God's the absolute final authority in my life. Uh, but being a part of the Lord's local church, the authority comes through the Lord's church. Amen. And folks uh, that are shallow, they don't understand that, and they bypass the church. That's why they'll follow somebody who's not of the church. That's why they'll get involved in campaigns and crusades by these uh, TV evangelists that have nothing to do with a local church because they're shallow. They've never been taught anything. You ought to praise the Lord you've been taught something from the Scriptures. You ought to praise the Lord that uh, uh, you know a little bit about the Bible because there's a lot of folks out there who don't. Now, I'm talking about these folks are good-hearted people, a lot of them. They've just not been taught anything. They tend to be very shallow. And then can I say something about liberal Christians? They have an innate ability to twist the Scriptures. Hmm? They don't know how to rightly divide the Scriptures. You understand uh, in the book of De Deuteronomy, you find the law of witness. And under the law of witness, there had to be two or three witnesses uh, in order for somebody uh, to be indicted in uh, the, the court of law. Uh, and can I say, if there wasn't two or three witnesses, charges weren't even to be made uh, or brought. Uh, uh, and can I say, uh, 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 the same thing carries throughout the Bible. Uh, when it comes to doctrine in the Scriptures, uh, there has to be two or three witnesses, if you will. You've got to find the same doctrine written to the same people in the same context uh, at least two times, but most of the time you find it three times. At least three times. Amen. The reason we got the charismatics, they take most of their doctrine out of the book of Acts. The book of Acts is not a, doc, a book for doctrine to the church. The book of Acts is a transitional book uh, showing how the Lord took us from Judaism to grace. Uh, uh, how we went from being under the law to the church age. Uh, uh, you want to take doctrine for the church, uh, you've got to take uh, 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 the pastoral and Pauline epistles uh, in order to build doctrine. Uh, we told you the other night you can't build doctrine for the church out of the book of Matthew. It was written to the Jews. Uh, yet... Uh, Liberal Christians and a lot of folks that are not rightly dividing the Word of God uh, will take the end times for the church out of Matthew 24. I am not enduring to the end. Mm -mm. But liberal Christians, they, they, they twist the Scriptures. They'll say things like this. The Bible says, judge not, so you can't judge me. But the Bible also says you'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. I don't have to cut open an apple tree to see if it's got any sap if it's got apples hanging off of it. And I can look at an apple tree and say, that's an apple tree. You know why? It's got apples hanging on it. Uh, I'm not judging the apple tree. I'm just seeing the fruit it bears. Right. And can I say, uh, if something looks like the world, it sounds like the world, uh, it's got purple and green striped hair, uh, uh, it's got 47 spikes in its face, uh, 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 it cusses like a sailor and drinks like a fish uh, and wants to sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Uh, uh, the fruit of that person's life does not show they love Jesus because uh, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, I'm not judging that person, but the fruit that they're putting out is not Christianity. Amen. Mm. Again, if, it, if it's got a bill, it's got feathers, and it quacks, and it's got webbed feet, it's a duck. Looks like the world, acts like the world, sounds like the world, it's of the world. It's not of Christ. But liberal Christians want to twist things because they're always trying to justify their situation. I got good news. When you're in Christ, you don't have to justify anything. I'm just in Him, and He's in me. Uh, if you're always having to explain yourself, there might be something wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I just point them to the Scriptures. Preacher, why do you do that? Because the Bible says so. Preacher, why do you do that? Because the Bible says so. Preacher, why do you do that? Because the Bible says so. I've been bought with a price. The precious blood of the Lord Jesus. 
But liberal Christians twist the scriptures. Can I say this? Liberal Christians, they're baseless. They have a very weak foundation. That's why they quit church so, so quickly. Do you realize places like the Vineyard turn over their congregation about every nine months? Because they have no foundation. You can only go in there and wash windows so long. Your arms get tired. Ah. Uh, listen. I love worship. I love shouting. I love throwing babies. And I love running laps and having a time. I love it. But you know what? We're not always on the mountaintop. Sometimes we crawl to the house of God and we're hurting so bad we just need some salve. I don't feel like worshiping all the time. But I need to the things of God and worship all the time. Hmm? But can I say, uh, they constantly are throwing out music and throwing out little phrases and throwing out little studies to try and keep that crowd energized, but the problem is they're going to do it for about nine months. And people say, you know what? It's not doing it for me. But you get Jesus deep down inside... And even when everything falls apart, you find out he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. But they don't have a foundation. When the winds come and when the waves come, what they have crumbles. And I've seen so many that live a roller coaster. They're up one day, down and up and down and up. And they have no foundation. They have no substance to them. Can I say this about liberal Christians? They have very little restraint. They're not consistent. They're not faithful. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Paul wrote to the church of Corinth, the love of Christ constraineth me. You see, my love for Christ and what he has done in my life keeps me from doing what the flesh wants to do. The love of Christ in my heart and life causes me to want to be faithful. Mm. See, you're sitting there looking at me, but I'm looking around here, and I, I'm privy to know some things that a lot of people don't know, and I know people in here that are hurting. I know people in here that are ailing. I know people in here that are battling, and yet they're here. Why? Because there's something inside of them. They have something that constrains them, the love of Jesus Christ. And Jesus has put some things in their life that causes them to be faithful regardless of their circumstances. Mm -hmm. But see, liberals, you know, they have very little restraint. Liberal gets up and says, you know what, I don't feel like going to church. I'm not going to go. And at the church, at a liberal church, they don't care. As long as they get your money, they don't care if you're there or not. Mm -hmm. They really don't. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a family. You're not fitly framed together. You see, Brother Ray and the fellows are building that brush harbor down there. If they left, left off about every third rafter, um, I don't think I'd be wanting to walk on that roof. And it's not going to last real long. And if they only used a portion of the concrete, and they only use something. See, it, it's not going to last. And see, when folks aren't in their place pulling their load, it puts a strain on everybody else to pull their load. And that's why so many churches are throwing in the towel and crumbling across this world is because there isn't po folks doing their job. I'm so thankful for how many folks are faithful here. And I'm so thankful for how many folks that that work and that are involved and that take part. It's a blessing. You don't find that everywhere. But can I say something else about liberal churches? They struggle. Liberal Christians are always struggling. And they struggle because they don't have real joy. They have some pumped up stuff. They struggle because they don't have contentment. They're never satisfied. Paul said whether he's abased or whether he's abounded, he's content. Hmm? And folks that uh, are built on the right stuff, 
It don't matter what's in your bank account, what's in your cupboard, what's going on in your life. You're content because of what Jesus has done in your life. Amen. And can I say, they struggle because they don't have a continual godly presence. Well, I'm glad I got a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. I'm glad for the sweet Holy Ghost of God that comes by and just speaks to me and walks with me and talks to me. So let me get to legitimate Christians, all right? Because a couple of you are about to pass out. I want to help you, all right? Well, can I say, find legitimate Christians in these things. Can I say, first of all, they're loyal. You can depend on them. Uh, one of the great testimony of our church is how many folks have been here 20 years and 15 years and 10 years and so on and so forth. And they're just here. They're loyal. Uh, I'm blessed to still have hair because when I give somebody a job to do, they do it. I can depend on them. I don't have to hold their hand and micromanage them all the time. Uh, it's a blessing. Legitimate Christians, they're just loyal. They're loyal to Christ. They're loyal to the church. Loyal to the brethren. Now, what a blessing for folks that are loyal. Can I say this? Legitimate Christians are guided. They have standards and biblical convictions. You know, folks say, well, I don't like keeping rules. Well, you don't want to, you don't want to be saved then. Amen. And by the way, I don't care what walk of life, there's always rules. No matter where you work, no matter where you drive, no matter if you go to a ball game, no matter what you find yourself involved in, there's always rules. Hmm? You know what people really say when it comes to church? They say, I don't want any rules. You know what they're saying? They're saying, I want to go to heaven when I die, but I don't want to live like a Christian now. That's what they're saying. Again, we've been bought with a price. Our life is not our own. There are certain things the Bible lays, lays out that we're to do. We're not to have any corrupt communication in our, in our mouths. Uh, we're to walk in the Spirit. Uh, 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 we're to uh, be given to uh, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, against uh, as such there's no law. Those things uh, ought to be incorporated in our lives. Uh, hey, uh, when folks see us, they ought to see something different. We're not of the rudiments of this world. Uh, uh, they ought to see the light of Christ in us. Uh, hey, they ought to hear something different in our speech. Uh, they ought to see something different in our countenance. Uh, they ought to say, hey, that's a real Christian. Real Christians, legitimate Christians, they're guided. You can't read this Bible and God begin to convict you about things. Can I say there are biblical convictions that God gives all of us? And then there are personal convictions. I've told you some of mine. Some of you are new. I'll tell them to you. I do not drink root beer in a restaurant. There's nothing wrong with root beer. I like root beer. I love root beer floats. The only way you can improve root beer is throw some Breyer's ice cream in it, man. That's good stuff. But I do not order root beer in a restaurant because now they bring root beer in what looks like a beer bottle. Now, if you order root beer in a, in a restaurant, that don't bother me. You know, I, I can't turn to 3 Timothy and find, thou shalt not order root beer in a restaurant. But I don't do it because God convicted me if somebody walking in that maybe has heard me preach or knows that I'm a preacher and just glances over and sees that bottle and says, look at that preacher having a beer. So that's my, that's my biblical conviction. Something else I don't do. I don't walk down the beer aisle at the go to grocery store at Walmart. I just don't do it. If I need to get to the other aisle, I'll walk around. I don't go down the beer aisle. I just don't do it. Why? As soon as I do, somebody will walk by and say, look at the preacher in the beer aisle. Now, Brother Tony does because he used to put tracks in all the cartons of beer, and I used to get called from Kroger all the time. Quit putting tracks in the beer. People are trying to get drunk, not get saved. But I, I don't fret Brother Tony going down the beer aisle. I just don't do it. Now, let me tell you a true story. I was preaching right by a 
in America's Georgia years ago. I was preaching revival, and I was on this this thing, and I and I made mention first night of revival. I made mention that you know I don't go down to beer out. Well, I'd got down there and got changed and went to church, and I didn't really have time to go get supplies. I was back for Miss Annette packed them for me before I left. And so I thought, well, I'll run to Walmart and get me some, some you know, Coca-Colas. I think I was drinking Pepsi-Cola back then. Uh, uh, go get me some Pepsis, uh, get me some uh, Pringles, uh, get me some Swiss rolls, all that stuff that evangelists and preachers live on, you know. And so get to Walmart. I just preach. I don't go down the beer aisle. And lo and behold, that sorry, no good, wicked Walmart had the beer on one side and the Pepsi-Colas on the other. And so I'm looking, I'm thinking, all right, big boy, you just preached it. What are you going to do? I said, well, I guess I ain't drinking Pepsi Colas. Figured I'd be drinking water for the week, and boy, I would have been in a bad mood. But I figured that's what I'd be doing. And lo and behold, just like the Lord, I go get my Swiss rolls, and at the end of the aisle where the Swiss rolls, there was some Pepsi Colas on the end of the aisle. And I said, thank you, Lord. Ah. <laughs> uh, it give you the desires of your heart. If you're living right, huh? So I got up that next night and I told them their Walmart was wicked, is what I told them. Uh, that's just one of my, those are just some of my, those, listen. When you start reading the Bible and you start wanting to live for Christ, Christ will show you some things in your life you don't have to have any part of. Not that they're wicked. Not that, you know, uh, 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 it's going to cause you to be churched. Just things you don't need in your life. And those that are legitimate, they're guided. Can I say this? Those that are legitimate are rooted and grounded in the Scriptures. You ought to know what you believe. I know some people that are Baptists because their parents were Baptists and their grandparents were Baptists, and that's all they've ever known is that they were Baptists. But they don't know why they're Baptists. You ought to know why you're Baptists. Uh, that's why we did that whole study on uh, Baptist distinctives. Uh, so you should know what the Baptist faith is about and what the Bible teaches and why we're Baptists. You ought to know all those things. You ought to be rooted and grounded in the Scriptures. You ought to know what you believe. You ought to be able to tell somebody who don't know Christ how to, how to come to know Christ. You say, preacher, I, I just don't know the Bible like you. Well, you ought to know it enough to at least tell them what happened to you. Hmm? But you ought to be rooted and grounded in the Scriptures. Can I say legitimate Christians are loving? They're not legal. They're not liberal. They're loving. Can I say they, they love the Savior? They're not afraid or not ashamed to tell folks they love Jesus. Can I say this? They love the Scriptures. I love to read them. I love to teach them. I love to preach them. I love to hear them taught. I love to hear them preached. I love being around preacher, people that love the Scriptures. I just love the Scriptures. Thank God for the Scriptures. I love reading books about the Scriptures. I want to know everything about the Bible. I love the Bible, huh? Can I say this? Legitimate Christians, they, they love the sanctuary. I love coming to church. I found even when I don't feel good, if I come to church, I get to feeling better after I get here. I just love coming to church. I love God's people. I just love being around church. I just love the things of church. One of the privileges I have of being the pastor of this church, when none of you are around, I get to walk in this sanctuary, and I get to pray, and I get to walk in here and talk with God and fellowship with God. I get to have church when even you're not here. I love the sanctuary. Can I say this? I love the saints of God. I love God's people. Best people in this world is God's people. I love God's people, and I'm glad God's got people everywhere. Huh? I'm glad he's, he's, he's no respecter of persons. I'm glad he's got white folks. I'm glad he's got brown folks. I'm glad he's got black folks. I'm glad he's got red folks. I'm glad he's got yellow folks. I'm glad God loves people. He saves people. When he saves them, he indwells them, and his spirit bears witness with our spirit, and our spirit will bear witness with one another. we got a kindred spirit because the same God of glory is living inside of us, uh, and I just love God's people. Amen. There's some of them I don't like, but I love them. Huh? You'll figure that out, huh? Uh, can I say this? Legitimate Christians, they, they're loving. They love sinners. Now, we don't love their sin, and we don't love their lifestyles. Amen. But we love them because Christ loves them, and we want to see them saved. huh? 
Do you realize outside the blood of Jesus Christ, there's a lot of us, we wouldn't have gotten along, we wouldn't be friends, we wouldn't hang out, but because God's done a work in your life and he's done a work in my life and he's put us together, we get along great and we're going to go to heaven together. What a blessing, huh? Amen. How many other sinners out there need to be saved so they can become part of us, huh? Thank God for sinners getting saved. We ought to love sinners. And can I say this? We ought to love the soiled. Those that are away from Christ. I don't know what it is in legal Christians, but they think if somebody gets backslid that they're, they're unredeemable. They're the off sky of the world. Do you realize you're just about one person pulling out in front of you in traffic of you being backslidden? By the grace of God, we are what we are. I do find that prodigal did come home. And you find out the elder brother that never left, he, he had a worse heart condition than the fellow that did leave. Hmm? There's a lot of folks sitting on church pews that's backslid. But I've got good news, 1 John 1, 9's in the book. We confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgive us of our sins, and what a blessing. And when folks get right with God, we ought to embrace them. We ought to love them. We ought to love them when they're not right with God and, have, and do flip-flops when they get right with God. Because Jesus loves them. And that's one thing I love about our church. It don't matter where people come from. don't matter you know, where they've been. don't matter if they still smell like the hog pen. They come in here, they're made to feel welcome, and we love them. And that's the way it ought to be. Legitimate Christians are loving. Can I say this? Legitimate Christians are servants. They serve willingly. They're not forced to serve. They willingly serve. I just mentioned Sunday we need servants for camp meeting. I went out there and that thing's totally filled up. You don't know what that does for the preacher. That blessed my heart. Folks are eager to serve. What a blessing. Told y'all we just come back from camp meeting and the poor preacher's wife had to do everything. And I felt so sa sorry for her. I felt, just felt bad for her. And, and she was willing to do it. She, she was doing, she was, did a wonderful job. But I'm thinking, boy, I'm so thankful our church. We got so many folks that get involved and serve and, and work. And what a blessing. Uh, and I'll say this lastly, since Mary's already passed out on me. I'm only, I'm only serious, Mary. You just nodded off twice, that's all. You didn't pass out, huh? Oh, Mary, think I was mad if I wouldn't pick at her. I've only been doing it for 20 years. Uh, legitimate Christians are submitted. Whatever the Lord asks of them, they do it. They're thrilled to do it. It's a privilege to do anything for the Lord. They're just submitted. I don't want to be a liberal Christian. I don't want to be a legal Christian. I do want to be a legitimate Christian. I want to be real. I don't want to cross the line and be too liberal here or too legal there. I just want to be right in the middle of that path called straight. I want to make an impact in people's lives. The greatest thing that will ever be said of you, not what kind of car you drove, not what address you lived at, not how much money you had in the bank. The greatest thing that will ever be said of you is that God used you to impact somebody else's life. Amen. That ought to be your desire. Hmm. Isaiah knew a little bit about that. He said, Lord, here am I, send me. You ought to submit your life and sign up for whatever God wants. Lord, you need something done? Let me do it. Lord, you need somebody prayed for? Let me do it. Lord, you need to visit? Let me do it. Lord, something needs done around the church? Let me do it. Now, he may not let you do all that, but he just might. And touching somebody else's life for his glory, friend, there's nothing like it. There's no roller coaster to give you the thrill that, than God using you to help somebody else get to God. There's no greater thrill than that. So tonight, don't be liberal. Certainly don't be legal. You're not going to last long around here. Be legitimate. 
Let me ask you one question tonight. When folks see you, what kind of Christian do they see? Not what kind of Christian you think you are. What do they see? I'll tell you what they ought to see. They ought to see Christ. And God help us because we all fall short of that too much. God help us. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come pray. Maybe you want to thank the Lord for his goodness. Maybe tonight you need to say, Lord, help me in this area. Maybe he showed you something that he's not pleased with. Lord, help me in this area. Maybe tonight you just want to tell him you love him. I don't know. Maybe tonight you need to come get right with him. Maybe you're here tonight and I'd say, why don't you come? We'd love to introduce you to him. Well, they're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, thank you for plan B and plan C and plan D. And Lord, things you do in our life. Lord, I'm amazed you even put up with us, let alone make plans for us. Lord, thank you for the word of God. God, I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to be a hypocrite. God, help me to be legitimate. Help me to be real. Help folks to see Christ in my life and choose to come and trust in Christ. Now, blessing this invitation, speak to hearts, help folks. The Lord will bless you and praise you for what you do. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.